Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm going to continue on doing this um, Connect 4 game. Now, in this video, I'm going to design the game logic, as in when someone wins, when someone loses, taking the computer move, taking the, computer, taking the human move, and computer move, etc. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to create a function called main. And that is the one that's going to start the game. At the moment, it's just going to run the. It's just going to run an other function called run game. So I'm going to now create this run game, and that is going to actually be the thing that's running the game. So now we've got all our functions in place. We have most of them, apart from the min max. So I'm going to put some variables in. Okay, I'm going to put some variables here. I'm going to need. Okay, the game is going to run in a while loop. That means that it's going to keep going. So this will control that. Because it's going to be my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, etc. And let side equals red. That means that red is going to, red is going to at the moment, I'm going to hard code this in. So red is going to always move first. And this just stores the last move made. Now, Wait a one sec, I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn something off. I think it's this. You know that noise that keeps getting made. That's just to stop me getting carried away and, and doing videos for too long. But anyway, I'm gonna turn it off. So we run the game, what do we need to do? We need to initialize the board. Obviously it won't work because the board's not gonna be in a, a fit state. So even if the board was being used for something, when we initialize it, that will reset it. So we can initialize the board, then we can print the board. So let's do that. And the beauty with this, if I do main and run main, we can automatically see it's working. Okay. Now I've got to go to get computer move, I just want to check something. Um, move OK equals false. So OK, this will break out. So what I need to do is I need to put something in here to say. Um, OK, because that will stop it from working. I'm just put. I just put this there to stop because I don't want to go in. Because I wanted to. Be, I didn't want it to stay in the continuous loop, so if I don't, I need to remove that line at some stage. Okay, so so I need to put a reminder on here. In fact, I should put it here, and that should be good enough. Now I'm going to do a while loop, and that's what I'm going to do. While, while what? While game over. Now normally, well, we're still turning the light on. Right. Normally here you could put, you could, you could easily put that, wall that, and take out there. You can do this. Why don't use that because it's hard to see, so I just use this. It's a bit, it's a bit more typing. It is a bit more typing, but sometimes you miss. 
when you're looking at when you're looking at a lot of code, the last thing you want to do is have to do a lot of debugging just because you don't just because you can't see that thing. So I do this now. If it's true, I won't put game over equals true. I'll just put game over. Okay, so that is the inf that would be an infinite loop and it would never come out of it. If unless I put a condition in. Okay. So that's our loop. And now I have to do a big if statement. A big if of statement to, to sort of see where the game is going. Okay? So what I'm going to actually do is, it's going to take a bit, I think it's going to be easier if I paste it all in and then talk about it rather than doing it. More than doing this, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually paste every single thing in. Right okay, and I'm gonna do it like that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that there. I'll explain it. So as you can see, that is one big while loop, okay? So it sets the game over to false, side equals red, last move equals zero, initialize board and it prints the board, Now I just remembered something. I've got to set that to minus one. Okay, because because what it is, if it's got a best score of naught, I want that to be taken up as a score rather than keep it because otherwise it will keep the score it will keep the score as minus one. As if I kept that as zero, it wouldn't work. So I needed to do that. Okay. So one second, just needs to turn something off. Okay, I'm back. On this, the side is going to get switched to and fro. So what it's going to do is, if side is equal to red, last move made equals get computer move. So what it's going to do is, it's going to run this function, and this function is going to go to get computer move, and we've already went through this. And that's the one that validates my move and gets a, eventually gets a move of me. And then it returns it back here. So what it's going to do is, if last, because what it is, remember on the get computer move, we put something in, get human move, we put something in here to return minus one if you press, that's the first to break out of it. So if we want to break out of it, we make it return minus one. And then it will just break out. Because sometimes you want to break the program. Okay? So that's where it does. If last move less than zero, then it will set game over equals true and it will continue. So that means it will virtually break. I could have just put break. If game over equals true, break. Well, I put continue. So I'm going to bit that. Okay? So if it's less than zero, it will break out. Okay? So we're not going to do that. Otherwise, that function that we created called make move, it will make the move and it will be called a side. Okay, so what that would actually do is it will make the move on the board. So, for example, if I put one in, it's gonna drop down to here and it's gonna actually make a move on the board. And then after it makes the move, it's gonna set the side to yellow. So that means if it's red if if the side to move is red, red is compute human, it's gonna get the human move, it's gonna make it on the board, and then it's gonna be the computer move. Now what I could do here, I could print the board here, and in fact I'm, I'm I don't have to but 
Let's print the board. It doesn't really matter. Let's print the board. So after the human moves, it just prints the board so we can see the human move. Another way I can do it is the human can move and then it waits for the computer move and then it, and then it shows both and then it, and when the computer moves it then it will print the board but as in here but we're not going to do that we're going to we're just going to print the board after the human moves so if, if it prints the board twice it doesn't really matter okay so that's the if else okay and then, we, so as you can see, we flip it here, and then it comes here, and what does it do? So what it does is, it says, find four in a row, or board, board, side minus one. If... So what it is, because because we flipped, because we because we change sides here, the side is a global variable. Because we change, whoever is yellow, whoever is yellow, they're gonna get the size changed to red. So what it is here, we flip it we're using that x or. So if that equals to one, it 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 knows that the game is over. Since the game over to Q, if side equals red, console log, computer wins, else, print board, console log, game over, human wins. Okay? And it can also detect if... So this case it will also sense that it's a draw and it will set the game over to true and then that will in fact I've done this I've done this just to break it out of the loop. So what I'm gonna do is will he actually he won't play a he won't play a game. I can't stop it playing the game by doing this. Let me see, let me think. No, I'm not going to run this. But what it is, I've put code in for this, but that's not complete yet. And I will go through that in the next video. Okay? But at the moment, it's not complete. So let me go back again and say what this does. This is the game logic, as in how to run the game. And it's quite, it's not really that difficult. Right, them lines are self-explanatory. Initialize the board, print the board, and then it gets itself into a loop. If the side is to red, it gets the human move. It makes it on the board, because remember, when the human is moving, we need to use make move to move. Okay? That's for the human. We've got to make make move, because the it's got to be a league. It's got to drop down there. Okay, and what it will do is it will make the move, switch the side, and print the board, and then it will go. It will go in the loop, and it will come back here, and then it will say last move mate equals get computer move, and this is where it will make the computers move. Because a computer, so that is. Let me just add a comment here. Make computer move. So that's making the computer. That line here is making the computer move. Let me get that out. Then it will set side equals red. Print the board. Now, in this if else, let me just minimize that if else. Wait, let me just see something. How can I get rid of it? Doing that? Okay, that's it. Yeah. Let's so after it does the if else, it will in its in the loop will come here. 
find four in a row all board. So that means if it was if it was remember you remember the say for instance the computer say if the human was the last person to move. The side is red. This line will set it to yellow. So when it comes to here, the human has just moved. We need to check whether there's a win on the board for the human because the human has just moved. Okay? So what we have to do is flip the side over temporarily here. Back to human. Find four in a row. If it's equal one, let me see find four in a row. Let's see what find four in a row does. Yeah, find four in a row. If it finds four in a row, it returns one. Okay. So, if find four in a row equals one, then it console logs game over. It sets game over to true to break out of the loop, and then it goes. If side equals red, console log. Computer wins. Else. print board, game over, human wins. So what it is, it checks for a win and it checks who wins. But it also has to check that if there's, you know this has empty function that I created? It also has to check and then I've used that thing there. I'll be naughty there. So let me change it. Has empty. Let's have a look. I'm going to leave it in fact. Okay, that returns false and true. Yeah, that's, that returns false. Um, let's do this. Let's be good. Let's be good coders. Okay. So what this will do is, it will do game over, game over equals true, console log, it's a draw, and then print board. Now the reason why it's got, and game over equals false is, somebody might win on the last move. The, what if you win on the very last move? Okay. Therefore, what will happen is, what will happen is, it will say human wins, it will say whoever wins, and then it will also say board empty and answers yes. So what it would then do is, it would then, it would also, it will say human wins, plus it will say it's a draw. So the reason why we put game over equals false is, we want it to, if, if there's no more moves yet, but somebody has won, Game over is going to be set to true, so therefore it's not a draw. Someone's won. However, if the if there isn't an empty square and game over is false, that means that means it's a draw. So that's why that is. So this function is just simple logic, and it's just running. Through, it's just playing the game. Now I've done all the functions in the game I've done the only thing I haven't done is min max so on the next videos I will be doing min max in detail um I was just looking for something let me just open this up so I'm gonna create the get computer move function that's what I'm gonna do. And we're getting close to the part where we'll be able to actually play a game. So all I have to do now is this function and, and the min-max function. So this, this is gonna be a small function. Well that's gonna call min-max. 
And that is where the fun starts. Okay, thanks for watching my video. Until next time, bye.